Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. So I wanna go over uh, some basic kinematic equations for displacement, how to use the equations, when to use them, and how to distinguish them um, from one, one uh, variation to the other and uh, you know what that means. So let's go ahead and write down our first kinematic equation that you should you should uh, always have on hand when solving a problem so for so we're going to label this kinematics okay and so then for our displacement we're going to put a general equation okay and the equation is going to be displacement with a vector is equal to the velocity initial times time, right? The velocity has a vector, plus one half acceleration has a vector, time squared, okay? I'm not gonna keep writing the vector notation, but just so that way, uh, initially I wrote it, those are vectors, okay? Now, this is the displacement equation. If I throw something in the air, or if I, you know, if something is rolling, um, and I want to know things about it. It's velocity, maybe acceleration, the time it takes to get there, uh, the displacement, which is the position. This is the equation I'm going to use, but I'm going to break this up into the X displacement and the Y displacement. Okay, so this is, this is kind of where people get a little confused. So you, you can't just use this equation in general. You have to split it into X and Y. So in the X direction, Right, I'm gonna rewrite this in terms of x. So displacement is gonna be along the x. So I'm gonna put the change in x is equal to velocity initial in the x. So that's how I'm gonna denote it, times time, plus one half acceleration in the x direction, times time, I mean times time squared. Okay, I'm gonna box this up. And this is the displacement in the x direction, okay? And now we're gonna do the displacement in the y direction. We have the same equation, but now we use the change in y is equal to velocity initial in the y times time minus one half g t squared all right the minus comes from this g right here which is gravity all right gravity is always negative because it's pointing down um towards the earth so we're already included in the equation right displacement in the x does not have it because acceleration in the x direction right is only if i accelerate something by throwing it or some other mechanism but acceleration in the y is always happening. Gravity is always happening downward. So this is a permanent negative and a permanent g for the displacement in the y. So it's very, it's different from the displacement in the x because you have a positive um, and you have acceleration in the x direction. So that, that's the first part that differs. Okay, so now we're gonna untangle it a little more. Right, so this is basically the equations you're gonna use. But if you don't know what the change in X means, so we're gonna have X final minus X initial. That's what the two and one mean. Equals velocity in the X direction or velocity initial in the X direction times time plus one half acceleration in the X times time squared. Okay, so all I did was change this part. And I'm gonna do that for the other side. So I'm just gonna write y final minus y initial, velocity initial in the, in the y direction, times time, minus one half g t squared. Okay, so almost done. So this variable here is the part that we can change again because if we're not given velocity initial in the x direction specifically, then we don't have this variable, right? But the good thing is that we can find it using triangles and using vectors um, 
from where it initially was it was thrown. So let's say uh, somebody threw a ball. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is the ground right here, okay? And somebody threw something in that direction, and it had an initial velocity, right? I'm gonna use a vector notation. Okay, so this initial velocity in, the, in a random direction is not described in a y or an x, right? And that's a problem. So this is your standard Cartesian x direction, y direction. Okay, when you say velocity, initial, it's not enough. You need to explain how much velocity is in the x direction and how much velocity is in the y direction. Because if there's a lot of velocity in the y, it'll go higher and then, you know, stop shorter. If it has a lot of velocity in the x direction, it might go longer. So it, it, it really changes how it, it flows through the parabola like that. Okay, so for this example, I'm just gonna do velocity initial is like this, and I'm gonna break this up into components. Right, I'm gonna describe this in two vectors. So the first one is gonna be this one here, you write an arrow. And then if you remember vector notation, we have to do, we have to express this one as two different vectors. So one is going in the X, one is going up in the Y like that. And they're arrows, so this one arrow is the same thing as saying this one and this one, okay? So this one down here, right, is velocity initial in the x. That's gonna equal something. And this one going up is velocity initial in the y. That's gonna equal something. Okay, so here we have an angle, theta, and this is a right triangle. All right, so this is just trig now, right? So if we use this angle, this side here can be represented um, as opposite over hypotenuse. And we have velocity initial, which is the hypotenuse, sine theta, okay? If you're, if you're a little bit, um, if you're a little bit rusty on, uh, on trig, um, watch another one of my videos that I go in more detail about the, the trig review. Um, okay, so it's opposite over hypotenuse, right? So that's this side. And now here for this bottom part, we're gonna do adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. So velocity initial, which is the hypotenuse, and we have cosine. Okay, so look at that. Now we can even do this. Now we can do this, which means we void this this velocity vector here, right? We don't describe it in that vector anymore. What we've done is break it up into an X and a Y, which is more precise and it tells us exactly, you know, how the parabolic shape is gonna form. So we don't need that vector anymore because now it's represented as this one and this one, which is velocity initial in the X, velocity initial in the Y. All right, so let's use these two uh, representations and put them into our displacement equation. All right, so for the X right here, I have, this stays the same. So X final minus X initial is equal to, but now for velocity in initial in the X, we have velocity initial cosine theta. It's still times time and then plus one half acceleration in the x times time squared. Now this is more accurate representation of displacement because now you can plug in uh, an angle. If they gave you an initial velocity, you plug it here. And in most cases for this uh, displacement in the x, you won't have acceleration in the x for most cases. So this, this usually would be zero. Um, so now let's do the y. So the same thing for the y, we're gonna bring that down. I'm gonna write it here. Y final minus y initial is equal to, for velocity initial in the y, we're gonna write this. Velocity initial sine theta times time 
All right, we still have the time there. Minus one half g t squared. So all this back here. That's it. These are more accurate representations of our displacement with the initial velocities and the angle. Okay, and so most of the time, this part here is going to be zero because um, once you throw something, it doesn't have any more acceleration in the x direction. All right, that's why it falls short. Um, but for the y, there's always acceleration gravity. That's why things come down. So this one, for this example, right, I'm just going to make this whole thing zero because acceleration in the x, we're going to assume that, you know, nothing is pushing this object that we threw. We just threw it and it, and it received a one-time um, velocity and no acceleration, no change in velocity. So I'm going to rewrite this, right? I'm going to use the, uh, the, no the other notation again, which is the change in x. All right, so I'm going to put change in x is equal to velocity initial cosine theta times time. And this part here, we say it's zero if it doesn't have any acceleration. And the problem will give it to you. So if it does, you use the whole equation. If not, this is most of the time what you're going to use. And for here, we're going to keep the whole thing. So I'm just going to change this part. We have the change in y is equal to velocity initial times sine theta times time minus one half gravity times time squared. Okay, so this, these two representations here are the ones that you're mostly gonna use, okay? This one here and this one here. This is for the y direction displacement and this is for the x direction. You also might see um, this velocity initial cosine represented as velocity initial x. So you might see this velocity initial x, that's for this part, times time. So it might be that short. Um, but it depends if they give you velocity initial in the problem or they give you velocity initial in the x, which are very two different things. And you should recognize them when, they're, when you're given that because that's a, a big confusion among students. So this one here, I'm going to do the same thing for velocity initial sign. I have the change in y is equal to velocity initial in the y. So I just rewrote velocity initial sign as velocity initial y. So it's just these two representations are going to be everything that you need. So and then the rest of it, one half, negative one half gt squared. Okay, so if you are ever confused about kinematics, these are the equations that you're going to need these four. Okay, so depending on if they give you velocity initial or depending on if they give you an angle, right? You can't use this one because you need to plug in an angle somewhere. And so you need to represent it like this in order for you to plug in the angle there. Um, so these are the ones right here. All right, and then last thing you can do is if you're looking for the time it takes uh, for that object to reach a certain part of the parabola or the ground, you can use this equation here to solve for time. So of course you could use this one too, but you'll run into quadratic. So you have t squared, you have t, and then you have a variable. You'll run into a quadratic here, and which is fine, but it's it's probably a lot longer. So you could, you could use this equation. So if we want to derive time, for example, then we use this equation up here and we just rearrange it and solve for t. So the velocity initial and the cosine get divided to the other side. So we're gonna have t, right? This got divided underneath the delta x. So the delta x stayed on top and the velocity initial cosine went to the bottom. And so now you have a representation for time in case they give you how far the object went, the velocity that they threw it at and the angle that it was thrown at. So different variations of the question are going to make you choose one of these, right? So you don't have to look at any other type of um, type of um, equation, but these four right here. This is for displacement. So we're going to do another one now for velocity, and let's solve a problem.
using these these kinematics. All right.